Wisdom is speaking in both songs and Proverbs. The difference is in songs, she's actually experiencing it. It's like she's going through it. And in Proverbs, she's overcame it. She's speaking from experience. So in songs, she's actually telling you something she's actually going through at that moment. And then in Proverbs, she's speaking from experience in the past tense, meaning she has already experienced it with God and she knows it to be true. And and that's why her insight is so valuable because she has already experienced God. So she's actually speaking from her experience with God when she's telling you these things in Proverbs. But um, we're going to start on my community page because I said some things here I want to talk about. Um, in Proverbs, she says, um, when it comes when it comes on you like a storm bringing fierce winds of trouble and you are in pain and misery, then you will call for wisdom, but I will not answer. And in Psalm 32, it says, so all of your loyal people should pray to you in times of need. When a great flood of trouble comes rushing in, it will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will save me from my trouble. See, that is wisdom speaking of actually experiencing at that moment. Like she's literally going through it and she's telling you how she's going through it. You know, like this is what God is doing for her. But in Proverbs, she's actually saying like, listen, this is from experience. So I'm telling you like, this is what I've experienced. And if you are, you know, you want to go off my experience, this is what's to be true. So in songs, she's actually going through it right at that moment. And in Proverbs, she's actually went through it. And she's like, listen, I know this is true. It's been approved. It's been tested. I tested it. She's like, what's this was saying? I tested this. So it's proven to be true because it's my test. And she's speaking. But um, in songs, she also says, um, you know, I used to pray in times of need when a great flood of trouble comes rushing in, it will not reach them. And in Proverbs, it says, you will not have to worry about sudden disasters such as come on the wicked like a storm. She's saying the same exact thing. Like literally she's telling you and she's using the same words. That's why, you know, I'm like, okay, well, people surely understand and see this. Like she's using the same verbiage, same words. But the only thing is, certain things are changed. Like in Psalms 19, it says reverence for the Lord is good, which is in, in most Bibles, it says fear, fear of the Lord is good, but fear and wisdom are not the same thing. So in reverence and wisdom are not the same thing. So if we're speaking of wisdom, it needs to say wisdom and not fear and not reverence. But let's just, let's just say this. It says, reverence for the Lord is good. It will continue forever. The judgments of the Lord are just. They are always fair. They are more desirable than the finest gold. They are sweeter than the purest honey. Now, you guys know I stay in Proverbs. And once I see some verbiage like this where it's saying like um, that desirable than the finest gold and sweeter than the purest honey, I'm like, wait a minute. That is wisdom. <laughs> You're not speaking about anybody but wisdom. This is what she always says. So in Proverbs, she says, what you get from me is better than the finest gold, better than the purest silver. And then in in Psalms, it says, they are more desirable than the finest gold. They are sweeter than the purest honey. It's another verse in Psalms where it says purest honey too. But in this this case, they're both pure, pure, you know, sweeter, sweeter. So it's, it's the same thing. But they're both saying the same thing. The only difference between them is that, you know, it's two different time periods. It's it's two different situations. It's two different circumstances. And in songs, she's actually going through it. And in Proverbs, she's overcame it. And she's telling people, she's telling humans, like, listen, this is my experience from God. <laughs> like, I made God mad. I did some things to God, and it led to me understanding him. I made God mad. I went out of term. And that's the thing. You guys know I've been studying Gnosticism for the longest. And to me, I always felt like Gnosticism was the truth. You know, I, I didn't I didn't say that, you know, that's the way of life I live in. But, you know, I'm close to that, like, because they hold the most truth. But the Bible has some truth, too. It's just a uh, polluted truth. It's not 
the actual truth is just stuff mixed in from copying other people. And to me, to me, I feel like they piggyback off of narcissism because they both existed around the same time. And narcissism, their their books goes in deeper detail. It seems like the Bible is only like parts they took out of it. But, you know, I'm, I won't I won't speak on the Bible because I know some Christian people on that will lose their minds. And, you know, I don't I, I don't have any issues with the Bible, so <laughs> I don't want to make that an issue. You know, I'm, I, I study everything and that's what wisdom is. That's what I want to say. Um, people don't study everything. They say they do, but they don't. And to have wisdom, it means you have to study everything. I mean, everything. People borderline scratch the surface when they say they have wisdom, but all they know is the wisdom that's talked about in the Bible. Now, I want to say this because when I first made my videos, if I would have been going just off the wisdom in the Bible, I wouldn't know what I was talking about. I gained wisdom from out of the Bible. Then I came back in the Bible with the wisdom that I gained and realized, oh, my God, they're both saying the same thing. But what kind of, you know, shocked me was like, oh, in Proverbs, wisdom is saying um, I was there at the beginning. If wisdom says that everybody should pump their brakes and go back to Genesis and take that verse and put it at the beginning because that's where it should be because she is the beginning Nothing, everything else came after her. So she shouldn't be in the middle of the Bible. She should, she should be at the beginning. But, you know, that's another story for another day. But another reason why I say that is because God made a promise to wisdom. People don't realize the strength and promises that God made to people. But what I want to say is wisdom was from the beginning. She was one of the, the first things in the beginning if God made promises to Old Testament prophets, you would imagine that he made a promise to her because that's what he was doing back then. He was promising people things. He was promising prophets things. He was promising people and prophets. He led those people out of Egypt with a promise. He led most a promise, Noah promise. It was just so much promise. So you would imagine that he made a promise to wisdom and he did. It's in the Bible. This is the same wisdom that they speak of that's hidden, the hidden wisdom that Christ had when he walked this earth, the glory that he had that they didn't understand, that they didn't realize, that's the promise God made the wisdom. And people can't see this because they can't get past religion and the promises to the prophets in religion and the promises to the nations in religion. First of all, God has already fulfilled most of all those promises. If you are standing on a promise of an Old Testament prophet, you are crazy. You are crazy. You standing on a shaky promise because in reality, they have polluted history and we don't really know who those people are. They could be black people. They could be Jews. They could be somebody else. They could be Greeks. Those people could be anybody because they could, they polluted the truth. So if you're standing on a nation that we really don't know who it is, you're standing on a shaky promise. And you're standing on a promise that probably has already been fulfilled because this was in the Old Testament. We're not living in that time period. I don't understand how people can lead with a time period that we don't exist in. Like, why are you telling people to, you know, believe they're a nation that existed in a time period that we're not living in? We are not living in the Old Testament. Why are we trying to correlate ourselves with the Old Testament, even though I, you know, I know about the truth with Africa. I know about all of that. I know, I know where we come from. I know how they polluted the truth. That's why I'm not standing on that Old Testament stuff. You are fighting for Old Testament prophets, promises that probably I have already been fulfilled. I believe they have already been fulfilled. I, I know they have already been fulfilled. Everybody in the Old Testament was fulfilled through Jesus. Jesus was the promise that fulfilled all the Old Testament prophets. And you know why? Because they had died already. All the promises God made to the Old Testament prophets, they were already dead. They were dead. So God, God had to fulfill the promises he made to them. So guess what? His son died. His son died and he entered that world of the dead to fulfill those promises, to to bring those promises, to be the promise, because he that's what he was. 
See, those Old Testament prophets had di- had died away, and they thought that God forgot about them. They thought that God wasn't going to fulfill the promise, but they hadn't realized that the Son, the Son who was also a promise, would be able to access their promise through them, through Him. So He fulfilled their promise, but. That's neither here nor there. I'm talking about we're not living in that time period. Jesus came and did what he was supposed to do. And people are still fighting about nations. 